Hey leaders, uh, this week we are studying James chapter 3 verses 1 through 18. Uh, not a lot of super thorny interpretive issues in the passage, but a lot of very, really rich imagery and uh, specific application for each of us for sure, as we're talking about the tongue and the power of the tongue. So uh, when you hit the observation section in particular, I would spend some time on number three, listing the types of uh, figurative imagery that you see, the different figures, and then uh, under the interpretation, uh, number three talks about the fire, but I would spend some time in the interpretation question just asking them to unpack the significance of each of the four images. So you've got uh, you've got uh, the, the the ships. Oh, hold on, let me flip back here real quick. Sorry, it's Monday morning. My mind just went blank for so, for just a second. Uh, the bits and horses' mouths, the ships, then the fire, and then the wild beasts. And I would spend some time, let's just talk about that imagery and the implications of that imagery. I think that that uh, could make some really rich conversation. Uh, under interpretation, question number one, how does the idea of speech fit into the flow of the book of James? In other words, how does this passage relate to what comes before and after? Uh, I would uh, reiterate the concept of uh, judgment, uh, maybe even take them back and have them read together 1 Corinthians 3 verses 10 through 15. Uh, question number two also relates to judgment. And just have that moment where you discuss again the, the evaluation of the believer's life and how we live now uh, really matters to the Lord. Uh, maybe a discussion about what are the kinds of things that the Lord uh, rewards, what really matters to him. Uh, maybe pointing out and making, a, hopefully you can draw out from them that uh, the motives of our hearts are really critical to the Lord, even more so than the than the outcomes. So as an example, when Jesus is sitting with the disciples in the temple and uh, the rich people come in and they put in all their coins and make, you know, clanky and noise in the in the brass receptacles. But then a widow comes in, she puts in uh, just two small copper coins. And Jesus said, you see that? Disciples obviously missed it. He said, well, she gave more because in God's economy, what he really cares about is our intentions and motives of our hearts. And so, you know, at, at the judgment seat of Christ, um, what we're being evaluated on uh, really is what God sees inside of our hearts. And that relates to this passage as well, because uh, in a sense, it's not just the words that matter, but the heart behind the words and what's happening in us that we would speak certain things uh, toward other people. So, um, yeah, it hit on number three for sure. How is the tongue like a fire? How does the tongue defile the rest of the body? Implications of uh, how our speech can affect our entire lives, change the course of our lives. Number four, spending a little bit of time, again, on wisdom, because there's going to be a really tight connection between um, our speech and wisdom. What is biblical wisdom? What does it mean that there's another type of wisdom, which is earthly, natural, and demonic? I think what James is pointing to is, in a sense, there's two ways to live our life, and that is uh, the way of God and his godly wisdom, the way of flesh and fleshly wisdom. Uh, earthly, meaning it's only perspective, is what happens right here and right now. Uh, natural, me being literally soulish, that is, uh, in a sense, maybe selfish, uh, what I want for myself. And then even demonic, that, you know, as the, the tongue is set on, by fire, set on fire by hell, uh, the speech, uh, this wisdom is demonic. Um, the essence of that being that it's uh, pursuing self-interest above the interests of God and, and others. So uh, cross-reference I use in sermon might be helpful. Philippians chapter 2, looking at Christ's example and the imperative on us to follow Christ's example um, and not being grasping for himself. Then number five, uh, verses 13 through 18, how does behavior reveal the type of wisdom a person is relying on? What are the results or fruit of each um, I think, you know, unpacking those descriptive things of selfish ambition and conceit and all those things, as opposed to um, the the wisdom from above, which is pure and peaceable and uh, unwavering. Uh, one observation is that word unwavering is from the same root word as uh, doubting in uh, chapter one, where James says, let him ask of wisdom without any doubting or without any wavering, without any judging between so he's saying the wisdom from above uh, is all in for God's way. And the result then is, is a heart that uh, speaks things that are really encouraging. So, uh, you know, rather than just uh, camping just on the negative, when you get to the, the application, um, 
I would, I would spend some time just brainstorming with them. How can we use our words in such a way that they give life? So as it says in Proverbs, death and life are in the power of the tongue. How can we use our words in a way that gives life to, uh, to our friends, to our spouse, to our children, to our roommates, to our coworkers? Uh, I, I think based upon the nature of this particular passage, I would spend a lot of time uh, in application on not just how do we tame the tongue, but how do we use the tongue positively to do really beautiful things. And then the other application question that I would spend some time on uh, is challenging people to uh, ask for honest feedback. Uh, that takes a lot of courage and you need to select well, but uh, God has given us to one another to uh, really challenge, equip, encourage, and uh, spur one another on to be more like Christ. And the tongue is certainly one of the really most <laughs> significant areas where we all uh, need to exhibit some growth uh, and some submission to God's wisdom in our lives. So uh, that's where I would focus attention this week. Uh, I think it's going to be a really, really practical week, probably a little less time on uh, interpretive issues because they're not that thorny, but the application uh, and it could be really significant for some folks and leaders, if you're willing to be open and transparent and honest and go first with your own struggle, I think that that creates a, a safe place for your people as well to uh, to air out this issue and uh, as a result to experience some growth and accountability. So uh, pray for you every week. Have a great week.